we'll all convince her. Okay, so my video's pinned. I have muted all. Um, cool. Good evening. That was a nice little start. I actually like that little sort of warm, slow start so we can chat and stuff like that. We're going to do that at the end of the evening as well, family. Um, welcome, Jet Tila, Ali Tila. Kids are home, um, so if they run down, we'll all say hi. This is real life. If you've never taken a class with me before in this format, um, it's nothing like you've ever seen on TV. It really is just us hanging out. Um, I'm wearing shorts and clogs and no socks. This is how I lounge around in my real life. So um, welcome back to everybody who's been back here before. Um, I also have uh, a little, um, a, a smaller setup so I can read the comments. So while the class is going on, the best thing to do is to type in comments. Tad Wayland, our sous chef, uh, our actual executive chef of our, of our company, he's gonna be on here answering questions as well. Um, and this basically, cl this class is, uh, serves a few purposes. What's wrong? Is How this is the usual cord? Yeah, it's the better cord. So, is it going to be long enough to... Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. We'll see. We'll work it out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you guys have been with us before, if that video cuts out, we have to send you something. So I think Allie's uh, hope. We're, I think they're already yeah, hoping that it's going to happen. We're, I'm sabotaging myself. No, I secretly want to send you guys stuff. It just gives me an excuse to do so. Um, I can't see everyone's screen right now. I'm going to cook for about 30, 45 uh, minutes, and then I'm going to take the camera back, and then we're going to do a Q&A and hang out. So, uh, Bridget family, thank you very much. Um, I need that iPad stand. Yes, isn't that cool? It mounts right to a little situation. We have, we're, we're full of tech here. Um, uh, okay, I don't want to uh, bore you guys anymore. If you have any questions, do let me know. Excellent. So, I have questions coming in. Tad's going to man those questions. I'm going to get cooking. Uh, tonight, we have a pretty fun uh, menu. Uh, Thai too, uh, papaya salad. I think let's start there first. And instead of like giving you a 30 minute lecture, I'm going to talk about the ingredients as I use it. Okay. Um, and someone's iPad's on a wine box. That's great. I love that, Melinda. Um, so, Thai food. Let me give you the basics of Thai food. Okay. Um, so, Thailand, one of the only countries in that Southeast Asian region uh, to never be colonized. And that really kind of speaks to the history and the natural kind of progression and evolution of the food. Uh, there's been a lot of trade over the years with China, um, especially. So there's a huge uh, population of Chinese in Thailand. So you'll see noodles and rice. Yo, especially noodles. That's a Chinese thing. All right. Uh, soy sauce, um, obviously, oyster sauce. So uh, most Thai um, vendors, restaurateurs, actually have a Chinese background, like myself. So I'm going to tell you guys a, a, a dirty little secret that I didn't tell Ali until we, after we got married, but I am mostly Chinese. I am, you're, I'm, you're fake thai. I'm fake Thai, as Ali says. So uh, I'm 100% Chinese. Uh, during the communist occupation or the takeover of China, a lot of Chinese um, fled and a lot of fled to Thailand. So I'll give you a, a fun little cool note too. Uh, if you see a Thai person whose name ends in K-U-L, uh, that's usually indicative of them being Chinese. So my family's name was Se, T-S-E, uh, and then when we moved to Thailand, we had to turn it into Tila Kamonkul to fit in. And when I started writing at the LA Times about 20 something years ago, I changed it to Tila to make it more, I don't know, palatable. Okay. Um, they went to Jamaica. They went everywhere. I mean, the Chinese went everywhere. I've been, we have someone joining from Mexico tonight. Um, I did a lot of produce agriculture work in Mexico. So there's China. We're, we're everywhere, dude. You can't get rid of us. Um, okay. Um, ingredients. So we, we know where. We're attached to Southeast Asia. The south, south of Thailand is full of ocean, Adam and Sea. North of Thailand is in that Golden Triangle region. So we trade a lot of culture with Vietnam and uh, Laos as well. So things like papaya salad are actually Laotian. Um, we have seafood, obviously, because of the beaches. We have uh, animals because of the north. We have the rivers. The whole Mekong River runs through. So you see a huge diversity in food and ingredients. And because of our um, climate as well, you see a huge diversity within the climate. There's a few culinary regions of Thailand. I would say Bangkok is its own thing. All the good things come to the middle because of commerce and the capital. I mean, not the capital, obviously, but the, king, the king's palace was there in the last few hundred years. Um, but in the south, we have influence, um, a lot of other influence. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get boring if you let me teach the way I used to teach. So I'm going to get cooking as I teach. How does that sound? Okay. Um, I'm going to monitor my, uh, my, my monitor, I'm going to monitor my monitor um, for, for uh, questions, but I'm going to get into it. Let's start with salad, because I think it's really a nice way to teach the flavors of Thailand right here. This is a food processor, okay? 
uh, before they were food processors, this is a uh, machine that you could plug in. This is the old, old school way. You've probably seen stone mortars before. Uh, this is a wood mortar. It's actually turned from one giant trunk of tree. Um, and this one's special. It's been in my family for a really long time. You've seen stone mortars to make curry paste. We use, um, we, we use wood mortars to make salads. And you'll see you don't need that much power. Uh, green papaya salad. Um, let's see, fun fact, Chinese Jewish people go back. Yeah, oh, cool, excellent. I like that. Um, so I'm going to be reading all these. Thanks, Sherry. Um, so papaya salad, not Thai. Uh, actually, the, the version that you eat in a Thai restaurant really originates in Laos. Um, and um, uh, but green papayas, let's start there. This is the same papaya that we pick off the tree. Uh, it's a Maridol papaya. It is not the Hawaiian sea. It's not the Hawaiian papaya. Uh, we are recording, Brian. Thanks for, thanks for getting my back. Yep, we are recording. So uh, we'll be posting this after this. Um, can you confirm? Yeah, recording. So uh, do you want boring ingredient stories? I'm going to wait for yeses and noes because I'm going to tell you the or how um, green papayas got commercialized in Southern California. Okay, lots of yeses already. I get it. Okay. Um, so uh, this is not the Hawaiian papaya, which is smaller and more orange in flesh with the black seeds. This is a Maridol papaya, and they come in two shapes. They're either round or they're long, okay? Um, they've been growing, they grow these uh, in South of Mexico. Oh, that's where actually us Californians get them anyway. Um, about 30, 40 years ago, my dad started the agriculture business uh, in uh, Asian agriculture, really proliferated Asian produce in Los Angeles, which became Asian produce in America. Um, so papaya size matters. The size does not matter. I'm not, yeah, exactly. Um, trying hard, kids here, trying to behave. I'm gonna behave. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, so my dad went down there uh, about 40 years ago and uh, went to, I think it was either Chappas and there was a papaya vendor. And he said, hey, I, I'll take your entire field of papaya. I know there's a glutton papaya. And the, the gentleman's like, senor, uh, these were not ripe. You don't, you, don't, you don't want these. You don't know what you can't do anything with them. So he winks and nods to himself. He's like, no, don't worry about it. I'll take it all. I'll send it up. I'll figure it out. I don't know what I'll do with it. Um, but um, so he sends the first load of green papaya north of the border for the specific use of green papaya. And he marks that up like 10 times. So the Thais, the Vietnamese, the Laotians, the Indians, uh, they were all like, where did you get green papaya? We haven't seen it in the States. And he's like, don't worry about it. I'm the man. And uh, that's it. So there's a fun story about how uh, these proliferated. Um, what, do you want, what am I looking for in green papaya? I'm looking for a smooth, waxy skin. I'm also looking for that papaya not to fall down. Uh, and then I'm going to peel it. Okay. So with this papaya, it is usable. Um, it's, imagine, if you will, a cucumber, friends. About 30% about of the center is taken up by seed pod. And before the seed pod, there's a pith. And I'm gonna shave this papaya uh, like, like the grandmas do, just to show you. Um, and we don't eat past the pith. You hear me? We don't eat past the pith and we don't eat the seeds. You can roast them and crush them and turn them into other things, but raw, we don't wanna eat them because they don't taste good. Rumor has it, they, can, they have poison, just like apple seeds, it'd probably take an entire ton to consume uh, before you ever got sick, okay? So that's what we want. We don't want the skin. I'm going to show you how mom's, grandma's, great grandma's shredded papaya. Uh, and this is how they did it. Just with a little knife here. Uh, and they would just sit there. Have you ever been to Southeast Asia and you watch papaya salad being made? It's literally just cutting some, uh, are these really vertical lines, team? Yeah. Right? Like vertical lines. Shred it, shred it. And not am I going that deep. I'm probably going about a half inch, right? And then once I get a good amount of lines in there, I take it and then I shred it into a bowl and collect it, okay? So there it is right there. I'm gonna take the knife and then just let it fall onto the collection plate or the bowl, all right? So that's how they did it back in the day. And you'll see that, like you're along the, the street, street food, you just see the, the shaving of papaya, just being this, and then doing that. This knife is crazy sharp. Tad just sharpened all our knives. So uh, I'm actually going deep in here because, um, man, Tad, you did too good of a job. 
Um, all right, so you collect a ton of this green papaya. When you have uh, Chef Tad, he just makes a whole bunch of it, just like that, okay? Um, other fun facts about papaya, friends. Um, yeah, papaya enzymes are good for um, making meat tender, so tenderizing meat. So if you ever want to pair papaya juice or ripe papaya uh, with meat, it's a good way to tenderize it. So any questions on how to gather papaya? Um, and if, if you're like, screw that, dude. That's too much work to do it that way. Um, these little hand mandolins, little uh, rake mandolins, those work really well too. So, so that works. Where can I get Chef Tad? That's a good one. Sea Hill, that's right. Uh, and what else? Uh, Thai cooking class um, in community college, and that's how she showed us. Yep. Uh, obviously, if you're a huge restaurant, um, there are other faster ways to do it. There's a machine that we use called a Roboku. Very big, very commercial. That's a very fast way to get the shape. So, questions on papaya? Uh, Tad, Tad has done this ahead or you'd spend all night just making me uh, gather papaya. So substitutions, uh, like I said, uh, I love green apples. Um, I really like doing a mix. I'll do green cabbage, Granny Smith apples, carrots, um, because I get, I get crunchy, I get sour, um, etc. <clears throat> so let's get into this here. Hey, where's my food processor? There it is. So um, the other ingredients. We need to start the base of the dressing. And the way we do that is we need to get our aromatics in there first. So these are Thai dried shrimp. And uh, they usually come in the freezer or the refrigerator section, okay? Um, do I just go around eating fruit gathering shreds? Yeah, exactly. Uh, could you use jicama? Absolutely. So anything that is crunchy and has a nice sweetness, absolutely. These are pungent. So that's why they're delicious, okay? I'm gonna add that to my food processor really quick. Uh, if you shred ahead of time, do you need to soak? Not at all. These will not oxidize. These will not, be. Tad shredded them this morning, stuck them in the fridge, no rinse, no nothing. He actually asked me, he texted me, he's like, hey Jet, do I need to? I'm like, no, you're good. They will not oxidize, you're good. Um, Japanese dried shrimp, similar, no. Japanese dried shrimp and, and, and Korean dried shrimp, they had their heads on them, uh, they're, they're hollow. Um, no, you want a nice medium. So very good. When you buy these, friends, um, they're salty and they're fermented. So they're savory. They release a lot of umami. Hold them in the freezer. That's the best way to hold these because these will oxidize. All right? So that's in there. Uh, let's go deeper. So someone, a bunch of people emailed me about dried shrimp, I mean, um, long beans. We couldn't find them either in, in L.A. in Thai town. So no big deal. So what did I do? I substituted blue lake. So basically green beans, uh, green standard traditional hair cover, but they, they, no, bigger, the green beans, all right? Uh, and Tad, of course, does all this beautiful mise en place. Cherry tomatoes, uh, Thai chilies, uh, beans, uh, Mexican dried shrimp, no as well. So guys, uh, if you want to stay on this one, try to get uh, Thai. It's not ne ne necessarily Thai, but the best comes from Thailand, but the Vietnamese use the same dried shrimp. Laos uses the same dried shrimp, but it's the very small, headless, packed, bright orange ones, okay? Uh, can I use shrimp right out of the freezer? 100%, that's what I did. I vacuum packed what I didn't use. Um, all right, garlic, and you don't need to chop garlic for this, okay? Because the food processor will do it for you. Uh, a few of the beans, all right? That's gonna go in there. Uh, and then chili is up to you. These are Thai chilies. In Thai, we call them prikinu. Literal translation, Rat dropping chili. Mmm, so delicious, but yummy. Because in Thailand, they're really about that big. So these are big hybrids. Uh, they're still very hot. Um, so uh, I would say one will make your head sweat. Two, you're going to be like, holy moly. So uh, it's just going to be me and Allie eating this. So I'm going to go one. I'm going to do um, peanuts. These are just uh, salted, dry roasted peanuts. You don't even need the salt if you want. And none of these need to be chopped, OK? So, um, Ali, uh, fresh chilies. Yeah, for this one, fresh chilies. Um, actually, you might not even need to do that. So all I'm doing is I want to break up all those ingredients, okay? And who's heard of that restaurant in Portland uh, by famed chef Andy Ricker? Can anyone name that, that restaurant at all? And if you guys want to see in, if you guys want to see in, just give me a thumbs up, and I'll have Ali actually have you, you look in and see what's going on. Because I'm sure you're tired of looking at my mug. Okay, so um, 
I'm looking to break up all the garlic. I'm looking to get that really small. I just want to kind of smash up the beans, but not necessarily make them into smaller pieces, but I want all those flavors to release. I definitely want to smash up this chili. The Thai people, there it is, Laura, Harry, congratulations. The name of that restaurant is Fok Fok. Guess what Fok Fok means, this sound. That's fuck fuck. So Thai people say, uh, will say this sound is fuck fuck. Okay, uh, it kind of sounds like fuck fuck like chickens, but it's not. Okay, so that's a, a nice rough, a rough process. Okay, nothing is too small, nothing is too big. It's nice and broken up. It's time to go into to go deeper. Uh, Thai Thai food, five flavors. If you don't have that food processor, yeah. If you don't have this, all I want you to do, family is use a uh, food, regular food processor or a mini prep and hit all those ingredients together um, and then add the liquid to that. Don't put the shredded papaya if you're using an electric food processor. Process everything else with the, dry, with, the, uh, with the sugar and the lime juice and the fish sauce to make a dressing. In essence, you're making a dressing with the food processor and then you're gonna put half of all the things you want to mince up, like the uh, chilies and the and beans. And then you flip that out, and then you basically just uh, 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 dress it, make the dressing. So you're going to see this a lot. So it's, it's a little bit of coordination. So what I'm doing, yeah, Ali, do you want to come in on, on camera on this one? So, so with the spoon, I'm lifting and then I'm pounding. Lifting and pounding. I'm kind of turning things over on themselves. And if you can... Uh, if you can uh, rub your belly and tap your head all at the same time, it's a very similar situation. Because I want all these great ingredients in the bottom to come out. All right. And I'm getting that in there. All right. Are the beans raw? 100%. Nothing in here has had any heat to it. Okay. So look, I've got a nice mixed up situation in there. Now I'm going to create the dressing. Okay. And here's the dressing. Thanks, Ali. It was perfect. Uh, number one, this is palm sugar. Palm sugar is just the sap from the coconut palm tree um, that has been cooked down until the uh, liquid evaporates and the solids remain. So have you guys ever seen, you guys are going to open this up and show you how, how it plays? So palm sugar, once it's um, solidified, uh, they, they form it into dabs. I really don't know how else to call this thing. What would you call this? Like a, you know what I mean? And then they saw, and you can actually find it, a puck, I like that, because dabs have a, have a 420 connotation too, so I better not use that. Is your oven on? Can I turn it off? Uh, it's making yes. me sweat. Sorry. So, sorry, guys, Allie's been baking for like the last 15 hours. I don't know how she's not exhausted. Um, all right, so some of you are cooking along. So tonight, I'm actually going to pace out slower. I think that a lot of comments I got was, slow down, Tila. Man, you're cooking too fast, so I'm, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. If you're using palm sugar, uh, two out two ways that I would do it. Um, the one I like this kind of, you know, situation. Oh. You see how that's grating there? It's actually extracting a lot of palm sugar. Uh, the other way is to take the palm sugar um, and put it into a little bit of water and make a very dense syrup. Is coconut palm sugar is coconut palm sugar the same thing? One hundred percent, Terry. So, um, can I model? Can I can I take two minutes to talk about palm sugar? I am a coconut tree. <laughs> Before I drop coconuts from my hands, my fingers, I make shoots, like, like five times the length of my fingers. And these little shoots flower. Those little flowers pollinate. That's where the clusters of coconut actually grow off my hands. If, if before, those flowers are allowed to grow coconuts, I grab the shoots, I cut off some fingers, I tie those together, I put a bucket. That's how we collect coconut palm sap from those shoots because all the sap obviously goes to the flowers, they attract bugs to pollinate. So um, uh, once I grab that liquid, I put it in a big old wok and I, it just like maple syrup. I cook it down until the, the, the liquids are removed and then, uh, and then the solids remain. That's it, does that make sense? I hope that, that explains it. So you might see it in the store, just coconut sugar. Hey, Ty, do you want to tell us? He found some powder, a granulated. Um, I don't know where he found it from. So if you're like, I don't have palm sugar, and I'm too lazy to 
screw with that stuff. We'll just do this, y'all. Regular old sugar. All right, boom, just in there. No problemo, okay? Um, all right, awesome job explaining. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, Thai food is five flavors. There's gonna be a test. I'm gonna test all of you guys. Five flavors are hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. We call that flavor balance yum, Y-U-M. It's not a corny joke, it's not a dad joke. If you read a Thai menu, you see tom yum, yum nu. Oh, that, that literally translates to the balance of hot, sour, salty, sweet. So what flavors do I have in here now? I have palm sugar, which is sweet. I have dried shrimp, which is salty. I'm gonna back up the salty and savory with fish sauce, okay? And uh, I like, if you're gonna cook Thai, try to get a Thai or Vietnamese fish sauce. I like three crabs a lot, I think it works, okay? Um, what else, give me another flavor. Lime juice, Persian limes, don't get fancy. I like Persian limes more than key limes for Thai food because of the flavor. When you have a tad, you have lime juice, okay? Boom, in there. What am I missing? Hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. Oh, savory's in there because of the fish sauce. So now that I have uh, my dressing built, I'm just gonna keep pounding and getting all the flavors together. Very ceremonial. This really reminds me of street food in Thailand. It's a, it's a lot of fun. All right, Ali, let's do a little close-up. It is hot. Um, two chilies is hot. So Ali's gonna come in with a little close-up and see what's going on. This spoon is grabbing, this uh, pestle is smashing. All right, chasing the yum. All right, there we go. Uh, okay, so now that I have uh, the dressing, stay there for a second, sweetheart. Um, now that I have the dressing, I wanna finish it. So the rest of my tomatoes, like if you're doing this in a food processor, I want you to finish with these ingredients for the crunch. And then of course, I want a little more peanut. And uh, thank you very much, Ali. Um, and I'm gonna be dead straight with you guys. In Thai restaurants, they use MSG for this for this. So if you're, if you keep cooking Thai food and you're like, dude, it just doesn't taste like the restaurant. What am I missing? Uh -huh. um, you know, and you're not, a, I have no aversion to MSG, by the way. I think it's delicious. Um, my grandma cooked with it. So you're not going to hear me poo-pooing MSG. I'd like you to grab a little and put it in here, maybe like a teaspoon. And you're going to be like, dude, that's what the, that's why my food at home doesn't taste like yours. Chicken powder would be great for Chinese, for Thai, straight MSG. Mm. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I nailed I thought I'd have to mess with it, but I got the flavor balance right there. And I'm gonna tell you this as well. Thai people, I'm I'm mostly Chinese, as you know. And if you ever ate dinner with my grandmother and she cooked for you, and you walked into the house and she threw down food. And you took a taste like that and you were like, mm -mm, can I have some soy sauce? She'd cut your hand off. She'd be like, what are you talking about? I just cooked for you. Shut up and eat it. But Thai people are not like that. You're allowed to change your food at the table. So remember that. So when all my recipes are written um, to balance out, right? Uh, to, to be I, what I think is delicious, but you can be like, hey, Jet, my flavor balance is different than yours. Now I'm gonna quiz you. Ajinomoto MSG is the best MSG. Um, I'm gonna quiz you. Well, you're like, Jet, I like it, but it needs more sweet. Well, what do you add, team? Yes, sugar, palm sugar, white sugar. It needs more salty, she's missing salty. Well, okay, then you have fish sauce. Maybe it needs more, uh, it's like, I like sweet. And a lot of Thai people like sweet papaya salad. Um, and that's it, so you know, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I'm teaching you, and I'm not just teaching you the dishes, I'm teaching you the flavor balance of the dishes as well and how to get there. So there's papaya salad. We did it, we did it. Any questions on this dish? See how simple that is? Oh, stop, you guys are clapping, you guys are awesome, stop it. Um, if you can't, again, I, I as a restaurateur in America, I'm a Thai kid who's Chinese for real, but it's cooked in French restaurants and I've cooked around the world, I will take the concept of the yum dressing and apply it anywhere. So 
Remember, if you need a Thai flavored salad, you just want to use this recipe's liquids and seasonings and apply it across the board. It's okay. So um, I hope that I hope it gives you the, uh, a concept of of the overall thinking of the food and not just the dish. Okay, that's what it's important to me. Um, if you have peanut allergy people, um, I think soy nuts work really well. Anywhere you could do anything where you get a crunch uh, will work, especially nowadays. So, okay, uh, should we do curry? Do you have any questions, guys, at all? I'm looking at the team now. I see P Eric's cooking away. Brandon's chilling. He's got it. Sean is like thinking about it. Um, all right, I'm looking at the screen. George, Brian George is like, I, I see you, Tila. I see you. All right, cool. Um, is it okay to reserve cold in the fridge? Absolutely. Papaya does not break down very easily. Papaya is a fantastic, um, pin my video. You guys still can see me, right, as, as big. Okay, good. Um, I screwed up last time by not, uh, by, by, uh, by was going to post it, and then I, I kind of minimized like I did here. And then, uh, and then I messed up and it recorded that way. So it was hard for me to, it didn't basically have me full screen while people wanted to cook along. So I'm not gonna screw that up again. Uh, curry, okay for a brunch? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, add proteins. I think that's a really nice bed to add a, a fish, like roasted salmon. Uh, I would actually, I would grill steak over that. Uh, again, it's a base. I want you to think about it as a base. Yeah, thanks for laying out these people. Awesome, man. Uh, makes my life easy. Uh, okay, brown onion and curry, or is browned onions? Oh no, I'm sorry, yellow onions. Uh, for some reason, over the years, I think I'm old enough to start saying things like, you know, when I was young, we called them brown onions. So they could be, uh, it could be yellow onions, I think is what we used to call them brown onions for some reason. So uh, no need to brown them. Let's do some curry, shall we? Uh, I think Allie can repo that camera probably to grab a little more of this and then she won't have to lift up. I have four different types of coconut milk. Thank you, Sherry, for the segue into the land of coconut milk. Allie, that's great, Allie. Um, uh, Allie made coconut bars today. And no, yeah, you wanna show up your coconut bars? Let's talk about coconut milk, family. First rule of coconut milk is, oh, here comes, they're flying in. They're gonna magically appear off screen. Just get in the shot already. There you go. Ali made coconut bars, so shredded coconut. Very nice coconut. Um, and first rule of coconut milk: don't you dare buy light coconut milk. You got a yum. Laura says yum. Okay. Uh, we buy coconut milk because we want as much natural coconut fat as possible. And when you I'm like dipping in here. What's up, y'all? <laughs> when you open a can of coconut milk, firstly, Thai people, we lie to you. It says right there, shake well before use. That is not true when it comes to curry making. The rule to curry making is don't shake before, because if you don't, you get this beautiful globular layer of coconut fat. Okay, and that's what I want right there. So this brand is probably the most commercially available brand that's authentic. So Chow Kwa is phenomenal if you see that there, okay? Um, so don't shake the can. Now let's spend a minute on, on curry paste really quick, all right? Uh, curry, in the world of curry, we have Indian curry, we have Thai curry, uh, and then you have Japanese curry as well. All Thai curry is, is a blending of spices uh, and herbs. Uh, the base of all curries are shallots, garlic, shrimp paste, Thai lime leaves, lemongrass, galanga. That's the base. All the curries are very similar. What you finish that curry paste with, it determines what kind of uh, curry paste it is. So to that base, if I added red chilies, I would have red curry. Green chilies equals gray, green, green curry right? Yellow curry has turmeric and other dry spices, right? The second rule of curry is coconut is don't talk about coconut milk, right? You like fight club. Anyway, very good. Um, post your questions, guys. I, again, I'm not trying to bog us down, but I'm working at a, a chill pace so we can talk and cook together. All right. Allie, oh, Allie made coke, used the coconut uh, milk to do a coconut whip. That's what's on top. So that's what's on top. So is there whipped cream or just coconut milk? You can 
just you, you whip. did whip. You can just whip, whip the top layer that yeah. you know that you put it in the refrigerator and it solidifies. So Allie's claiming you can just whip this top. Right. Right. Put there. it in your refrigerator, let it solidify, and then just scrape so, off the solidified part and just and whip use that the solidified top part, part and whip it, and you can get coconut. Whipped cream. There you and go. So you can make non-dairy coconut. Exactly. Exactly. This has both. But Excellent. Allie did both because she loves whipped cream. I do. Uh, bamboo shoots in water. I don't care what shape they are. Drain them. Uh, add sugar to the whip or not? Question. Yes. Sea Hill, yes. Add sugar to the whip. Can we get some uh, recipes for desserts? Allie? Sure. How? What, what do they want? Allie. Uh, hey, guys, follow Allie Tila at, at Instagram and DM her. And uh, we could post the show. I, I made her own website for her. She could post mm -hmm. webs. Yeah, there you go. I can try that for my son who can't have dairy. Absolutely. For sure. Um, questions on coconut milk. Questions on curry paste. The last funky ingredient, if you weren't here before, for Taiwan, tamarind. And I know we had a lot of questions on tamarind, okay? This is my favorite way to buy tamarind. And again, we are trying to confuse you on purpose because we don't want you to make great Thai food because you'll, you'll be competing with Thai people. But I, I'm here to solve all that. It's like when Bruce Lee was teaching Kung Fu, he got really in trouble for it. That's me too. Uh, I'm getting in trouble for this. This is a lie. This is not a concentrate. That's actually just straight tamarind and water. So they shouldn't be saying that it's a tamarind concentrate. Unlike Indian and Mexican tamarind products, which are concentrates. And if you have those, you want to dilute them down with water. So memorize this color. If you have a darker, oh, I'm spilling it on my computer. If you have a darker tamarind, um, dilute it with water until you get that pale uh, brown color right there, okay? Uh, all right, let's make curry because you're Chinese, not Thai. <laughs> exactly. Um, you're fake Thai. I'm fake Thai. Okay, uh, this is coconut. It's a great brand. Kara, I believe, is an Indonesian or Malaysian brand. It's a phenomenal coconut milk as well. Okay, uh, let's get in the pan. That's Ali that's is, also what's in our uh, chia pudding recipe in our book. Is that one? Because on our chia pudding, she uses that. She's She's not loyal to Thai people like I am. She uses Malaysian coconut milk. I like the <laughs> Thai coconut milk because I'm Thai. Not really. Okay, let's cook. This is important. Um, I might reframe so you can see in the pan. Let's reframe. Can I reframe you guys for a minute? Can I reframe? You guys don't need to see me. You're tired of seeing me. I'm tired of seeing me. Okay, I'm going to reframe so you guys can look into the pan. Yes, that's it. You I like that. Is that cool? Yeah, I'm just going to stay here the whole time. All right, here we go. Full flame. You need a pan with very wide, a lot of surface area, okay? That's critical. Now, what you're going to do, all your mise en place is ready. French for prep. Onions are ready. Bell peppers. Kaffir lime leaf is ready. Again, don't need it if you don't have it. You're still going to have phenomenal flavor. I have sugar. I have fish sauce. I'm doing chicken here. And to make everyone happy, I've done chicken breast although I hate chicken breast, personally. But I'll cook it for you because I care about you, because we're friends, okay? Here we go. Uh, wood spoon or a, or a silicone spatula. Oh, I'm going pink today. I'm gonna go pink. I love these spoonulas. These are the best ever, because they don't stick and they're super heat resistant. So I'm a fan of these, okay? What part of the chicken would you, I like chicken thigh, personally. I really do. How many cans of, uh, do you have coconut milk? You know what? Um, for one, in, for one four ounce can, you could do two of these 14 to 18 ounce can if you want. But the recipe is true. It's a little big, but it's, it's, it's on the true side, okay? It will work. Firstly, you wanna do coconut cream only. Look at that, it's already frying up. Not the bottom, the top, okay? I want all my coconut cream from both hands, okay? Because I need to use that fat like fat and fry stuff in it. So watch, cranking up the heat. It's like working a roux together, family. You want it very high because you want to use the fat to, um, to fry all those herbs. Do we not cook down onions and garlic in oil? Do we not take those very amazing aromatics and fry them? What happens when you cook onions down in fat for a long, long time? What happens? It turns tremendously sweet. So if this is mostly herbs, right? Caramelization, very good, exactly. 
I need to caramelize these herbs to really pull out all the essential oils. And now I'm going to back it up and, and fortify. So that's what the, the Thai Latin is. I'm going to fortify that flavor. Uh, and then I'm going to fortify yet further. Fortify. I'm really Asian today. I'm going to fortify even further and add onions. How much curry? It's in the recipe, but um, about, about two to four ounces per can, depending how spicy you are. Just remember, about two ounces per can is going to be fine. But again, it's in the recipe pack that you guys have. So I'm really going to take the time and fry all these ingredients. And while I'm doing that, uh, I'm going to show you a cutting technique. Okay? So I cannot... Let's, let's have a chat. I cannot... Um, I can't put enough emphasis on this stage. This is 80% of your curry making. In Thai, we call this kua. Kua means to roast, to slowly extract flavor. And this is what I'm doing. Everything else is fast. This is the kua part of the deal. When, when I ran restaurants that served 100 orders of curry a day, this is my mother's sauce. Once my mother was done, I just need to add coconut milk and seasoning and I send it out the door. So this is the important part, okay? Now, uh, I'm gonna cook some of my chicken. In. I'm not making a full restaurant. The full recipe has like six cups of coconut milk or six cans. I'm just gonna do a small. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add chicken or my own protein, right? Uh, the spicy comes from the paste. That's exactly right. Uh, that's a good question. And if you're like, ooh, I like this flavor, but you're one of those chili heads that goes crazy and wants more heat, then add smashed up Thai chilies. See, I'm really cooking it down. And I'm, and I'm cooking it down to where I, I call the OS phase. And if you have kids, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna acronym it. It's not an acronym, but until you're like, oh, shit, right? Oh, shoot, that's what an OS meant, really. You're like, oh shoot, it looks like it's gonna burn. So you need to re, oh snap, thank you, that's even better. Um, oh snap, it's gonna burn. So, so it's really that important to cook it down at this step. And it's, it doesn't take long, it's just, it, so everything's gonna be easy. So that's about oh snap to me. It, it, it's thick like peanut butter. Remember how thin that was just a few minutes ago? And it smells tremendous. And that's what I'm looking for. So this is oh snap, what heat? I'm, I'm, I'm always full speed. I don't turn my heat down. I add ingredients to cool the pan. I never turn my heat down until I'm like, everything's in and I'm like, okay, I have to turn it down. Okay, so now, oh snap. I think it's gonna burn. I need to cool the pan down. Now I add the rest of my coconut milk, right? And now I work it in. And if you are like, if you're one of those people who's eaten curry in Thailand, I call it like, like in a good way, dirty curry, where it has a lot of oil on it. You can add vegetable oil to this, but I don't. I like a clean curry. I think Americans visually, uh, in America, when I serve curry, people are like, oh, I don't like that oil slick. It grosses me out. When in fact, it's got a lot of fat in it anyway. So, um, so there you go. Uh, okay, are you guys tired of this shot? You wanna pull this, let's go. Uh, you wanna readjust? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna show you a cool knife trick too. So. Um, any questions? You guys are good. No questions. Okay. I hope I'm doing a good job explaining. So what I'm doing now is, let me ask you a question. What is the principal starch you eat curry with in Thailand? In Thailand. Because in India it could be different, right? In different parts of the world it could be different. Principal starch that one eats rice. Very good. Who wins? Who wins first? Everybody, Ned Bridget, Leonard. Um, the aggressive boil is absolutely good. Jasmine rice, Simran, there it is. So, it, from a practical, I'm a practical man. Dropped out of high school, not college, I'm not a smart guy, right? But I'm a practical feeling cook, okay? Nobody believes you. It's the truth, okay? So, you simply now just want to reduce the curry until it coats rice. I don't want it to fall through, okay? Yet you're on TV. <laughs> TV, not indicative of smarts, trust me. Just indicative of being a good bs -er. That's all it is. Not true. All right? Not true. Oh, snap. There you go. Okay. So, you're, so one is just looking to, to reduce this until it coats rice. So what is the uh, visual measure? I don't think we have any wood. Is there any wood? 
I made a mess of our drawers. Allie's gonna kill me. Sorry, I used the it's wood. Totally, oh, you used the wood. I okay. Did that, sorry. We did we added the chicken. Coach the spoon, very good. Alan Johnson, gold stars. So you take a spoon, you run your spoon through the curry, you let it cool so it doesn't burn you. You run a channel across that curry. See that? And you go tap, tap, tap. If the curry doesn't run, you have the perfect consistency. In French, we call that nappé. Nappé. Um, it, you can nap it. You can sauce it, and it sits over the top. So uh, I'm cooking this until nappé, which I have. And now I'm going to finish it. Uh, we've got coats the spoon. Yep. We have our bamboo. And this can be refrigerator clearing uh, vegetables, right? Uh, whatever you want. I'm, bamboo shoots are cheap. They're delicious. Um, bell peppers. All right. And then, yo, we just made curry. That's crazy. Let me season it now. All right. Let me, let me show you the seasoning. All right. We're not done. We're going to let those uh, bell peppers and everything cook down a little bit. Okay. How about you, Saitel? I trouble for Saitel. All right. Let's season. But you know what? You guys are such Thai experts already. I think you know the number one salty ingredient. There it is. Um, Alan, I did not make the full recipe. I made only half the recipe for demo sake. I only did half. So um, <laughs> I forgot, Jill. Sorry. Let's get to do that. There it is. Thai basil. And if you don't have it, Italian basil. And watch, I, I'm very particular about it. Not. I take the basil and I do this. Oh, delicioso. Okay. Um, and then seasoning. Fish sauce. First, I want you to do this. Because curry, if you cook it right, has tremendous deliciousness. And then you go, do I need more seasoning? Okay. How about a few drops of, of fish sauce? Because I've cooked it correctly, it doesn't need a lot. For sugar, I can do palm sugar or white sugar. And then I'll do a, a touch. I'm actually taking the time to do this because Ali and myself, we're, we're going to eat this tonight. Again. So a little bit of sugar. And then uh, finally, tamarind. You don't need a lot. Uh, curry should not be sour. Not this kind of curry. There are curries that should be sour. Let me get a spoon. Let me symbolize tonight. Sorry, guys. I'm usually not symbolized. Though. OK? So. And then I'm going to go just a one, two, little two, three drops of tamarind, and I'm good to go. Um, the question on the board right now is, would I use brown sugar or honey? I would absolutely use brown sugar. I wouldn't use honey for this one. Um, the flavors might clash a little bit. The flavors might clash a little bit. So what brand of tamarind? This is, um, well, this one says um, ball and flour. But it's a knockoff of a brand called uh, Pantai, Pan P-A-N-T-A-I, which, and there's a few knockoffs, but this blue label is a trusted label in Thailand. So, uh, so people have knocked it off. So again, that's, that's the brand right there. But this is, again, go for that liquid, go for the liquid, non-seeded, it says concentrate, but it's not tamarind. If you have a block, bless you, Alex. If you, you know, if you have a block of tamarind, um, go to YouTube and look at my video on how to dilute that, and you'll know how to do that. If you're using Indian or Mexican tamarind, go, hi, you Halo. That's Halo, everybody. That's Halo. Hi, Halo. Um, if you're using an Indian tamarind, uh, don't not make this. Just dilute it down. That's all you have to do. Uh, so, questions on curry. We just made curry. Look how beautiful that color is. Okay, I know cooking is easy, isn't it? I made rice. I have rice here because Ali and I eat this. And look, this is how I finished my rice with a bunch of Chinese sausage on it because I love Chinese sausage. So I put the Chinese sausage in the last 10 minutes. Um, I bought the big tub of paste. Uh, you want to take it and put it in a zippy bag and just or put it in, in maybe separate it into three to four portions. And just put it in the freezer and you're, you're totally good. I do want to show you a cutting technique though. So um, let's see, Ali, do you mind? Yes. I'm going to do one cutting technique uh, uh, here, just so you can see how I like to cut the kefir line. Uh, whatever kefir line leaf you don't use, freeze it. It freezes phenomenally. All right? OK. This is how to um, 
So yeah, can I freeze? No, you're not repeating, Mary. Don't worry. Absolutely. This is your class. This is a private one-on-one. One on, one. One on fix sixty. Uh, this is how I want you. If you want to just use these for stock, you just tear them up and throw them in soup. But this is how you cut them small enough to uh, eat them. You lay them on top of each other. They're so easy to grow. They are easy to grow, by the way. If you can find a, a tree, guys, they're really easy to grow. All right, you put, fold it. This in French would be chiffonade. So I'm gonna roll, 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 roll tight. And then take my knife and, and just very tight passes. And uh, we call this soy to soy. Uh, like cow soy, you ever had cow soy? As to soy means to tear into thin strips. Same word actually would be chiffonade. It would be uh, a translation. So, so there it is. So that's going to be on the garnish for my rice bowl. I feel like I feel like uh, I need to complete this dish. So I'll, I'll just do it for you guys. I'm just going to say thanks, Ali. Appreciate you. So jealous? Why are you jealous? What are you jealous of? Because I have an alley and a tab. I know it's pretty amazing. Um, how long can you keep a dry shrimp in the freezer? Almost indefinitely, man. Like, like months, up to a year. So a little bit of rice, a wee bit of rice, and I'm making a Scooby snack for Allie right now. So, oh, I love you. Because as off camera, she'll eat. So a little bit of rice. How do I cook rice? First joint of finger. That's how I cook rice. Water. I put. I wash my rice. I put my finger until it touches the water. And then I bring the water level up to the first, first joint, that first crease. And then I, I simmer it for 20 minutes. I turn it off and I let it rest for 20 minutes. And uh, that's it. That's how I cook rice, real simple. And uh, resting is just as important as how much, um, as how much uh, water. So a little bit of uh, curry over rice with uh, kaffir lime garnish. And that's it, we're good. And you can even do this too here. You also can do, because there's basil in here, a little bit of torn basil, or chiffonade basil too. So, so there it is, y'all. Use Instant Pot, absolutely. Instant Pot for rice is great. Uh, any pressure cooker for rice works phenomenally. So I'm not mad at that at all. All right, guys, questions. Recipe two of three is actually done already. We're two thirds done with tonight's class already. Wasn't that fast? Um, does my rice method work for any size pot? That's a good question. I would say no. Um, one must give. In order to cook rice well, um, the rice should come up to about one quarter to one third of the pot. If you're, if you're bringing the rice up to halfway, you need to give it 100% room to expand and it won't. So, so remember that, all right? You don't want to do too long or too, you don't do too big of a pot to shrub a pot. There's no such thing as dumb questions, friends. Should I freeze the dried kefir lime leaf? Uh, if they're dried, no need. If they're already dried, you don't need to. If they're fresh, you absolutely should. Do you care that I'm taking notes in my, heck no, I love that. I want, I want you to send me pictures on my Instagram and I'll repost them. If you're taking notes and cooking out of the book, tag us, tag, tag myself and Allie or, or hashtag Chef Jet or Jet Tito. Um, all right, two of three, one more and we're done. So we're gonna take a second. This is my first time making eating curry. Titan Pan's made in Voyage. Wow, that's awesome. If I can't handle the spice, if you can't handle the spice, Use the lower end of the recommended curry paste. This is, I did not write this recipe to be very hot, by the way, okay? Uh, Ali, you, how is that curry? Is it hot? The spicy, I mean. No, honestly. It's so, good. so but it's, it's not. It's, it's warm. It's warm. But it's not palate blowing. If you don't love heat as super spice, then just use. Yeah, there's spice. It's, it's, yeah. here, try some. No, no, yeah, no, I've tasted it, so. But I, I eat a lot of heat, so. Um, all right, this is so good. Thank you. Okay, it's cool. It's spicy, but it's it's not super spicy. Awesome. A oh, good question here, um, uh, Alex. I'm diluting tamarind, still very dark. No, taste it. I want it to not taste acrid. Like, ooh, if you make this face, it's too sour. So dilute it until it's pleasantly sour, and that's it. And if the color's so dark, leave it alone. But it's the flavor that I'm I'm going for. Online shopping tips is hard because, oh, that's a hard one. I, there's no one store yet. That is awesome. Unfortunately, guys, there's not one store that's awesome. So, uh, gosh, let me think. You know what? We can continue the dialogue online, but I can't think of one one stop sh like one stop shop. I cobble it together online. Guess you need to start online store 
Yeah, right. If someone wants to back me. Really uh, I use Amazon for everything. Ranch 99. Yes, Ranch. if you have a Ranch 99, great. On the West Coast. On the East Coast, if you have, uh, what's the Korean market in, in New York? Oh, someone help me here. Someone's in New York. Simran, help me out here. I know you're out there. Uh, Lottie, I don't know that market, but yeah, again, let's just put them in the chat, guys. Minnesota, yes, United Noodle. I've actually shopped there. That's really good. So is there a good way of substituting kefir using lime rind? Eh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of agnostic about that. Lime, kefir lime, once you buy some dry, guys, you'll understand the depth of flavor. Because it's not just citrus. Um, the, the essential oils are, are so, so amazing. That, uh, I, I wouldn't even bother because the curry, the, cur the curry has it in there already. It's really just for garnish, okay? Bangkok Center Grocery in New York, very good. They have everything. Excellent. Bangkok Grocery, that's two times I've seen that. Bangkok Center, H Mart, that's it. If you're in Long Island, I've shopped at H Mart while I was working in New York. And they have a lot, but they don't have everything. So, but again, you know, if you cobble these things together over a week or two, it's fun kind of cherry picking. You know what I mean? H Mart does not have fresh kefir. Yes, no, I said H Mart doesn't have everything, but they have a lot. Also, if you have a local Thai restaurant, Thai people are so chill, dude. Uh, they might eat, like, can I have one or two kefir lime leaves and put in the freezer? They'll probably give it to you, all right? Uh, I love all these market suggestions. Very good, guys. Excellent. Let's make drunken noodles, shall we? If I was a burnt-up, burnt-out rock band that traveled the D-list circuit like Vegas, this is the song that people would, like, want me to play all the time. This is the, the dish that made me famous uh, in a, when I was young. Anyway, here we go. Drunken noodles in Thai uh, translates ki mao, put the oh, ki mao. Literal translation is um, not drunken noodles, but drunkard noodles. The drunk dude that's passed out on the street, he or she is a ki mao. Why do we call it? That's true, that's what this, the, the dish, trans yeah. And the reason why, Oh yeah, if someone wants to start a Facebook group, we could try to, I need to try to figure that out. That's a great idea. I like that a lot. That's a really good idea. Okay. How many beers do I need before I call you a key Mao? You would not be able to type when you are a key Mao. If you are a Chinese um, Kung Fu movie aficionado, remember Drunken Master? That dude was key Mao. I just dated and nerded myself out right there. Okay. Um, Maddie, I should make a video because I can teach you how to make fresh noodles. They're not very difficult. Um, I'm gonna plug someone on YouTube. Should I do it or should I not? Should. She made she made a, a nice video on how to make fresh noodles. So I'm gonna plug her. I think it's called Hot Thai Kitchen. Oh yeah. Or Pai Lin Thai Kitchen or something. But she made um, she made a really nice video on how to cook them yourself. So so um, if you can't find these, I'm gonna get off screen. Ali, you should entertain our friends. I'm kidding. She's like, no. I'm just yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm just, I'm stuffing my face. Tad, Tad, Tad got some of these noodles. So um, these are rice stick noodles, same as Pad Thai noodles, uh, same as Pho noodles, except they are the extra large, AKA extra wide. You can soak these in warm water for about 15, 20 minutes or the noodle sheets at one of our, it was Brian or one of our friends has it right there. Um, is drunken noodles same as wooden sen? No, wooden sen translation is glass noodle. That's all that is. So these are rice noodles. Glass noodles are made from starch. Uh, but you can make any noodle with wooden sen with, with glass noodle. You can make drunken noodle glass noodle, pad thai glass noodle, soup noodle glass noodle. So it's just a choice of noodle. All right, what do I need to talk about here? I need to talk about fresh noodles. They, they, they come in the deli section. They're perishable, they're fresh every day. Uh, and this is what you do with them. You take the blocks out. Also, fun fact, Chinese call this hall fun. I am Chinese. Uh, but they cut it in half inch width to make chow fun. Thai people cut it into one inch to make um, a, a multitude of dishes like this one. So all this was at one time was one giant sheet of noodles one humongous noodle folded over folded over folded over and just cut into strips that's all it was so if you guys go to pilot or hot thai kitchen uh drop a comment on her video and be like hey jet tila send me here to check your videos out. all right i don't know her but i want to give her credit she's a really she's a good youtuber she, she works really hard can't find in new york help 
Um, Simran is in New York. Whole Foods sells Nona Lim fresh noodles. Whoa, which, which Whole Foods? Which Whole Foods, Simran? Where in the city? Is there a difference? Is, how different is Chow Fun? No different. Only the width of the cut. That's the only difference. Uh, 46 Mott Baird, yes, in Mott Street in, uh, in North Chinatown. If you say, if you walk into Chinatown and you ask for Hall Fun, you will get this noodle. It will just be cut different, but you'll get it. Burbank Whole Foods. Wow, Burbank Whole Foods has these, Laura? That's amazing. Very cool. So there are places. Look in Chinatown. Just ask for Hall Fun. All right? So you're like, dude, I get it. I noodled this to death. I understand. Okay, I'm just pulling this apart. Would a Thai restaurant sell us fresh noodles? I bet they would. If you're like, I will pay you for one pack of noodles what you get for one order of drunken noodles, I bet you they would. We would have been back in the day when I ran restaurants, for sure, man. I meant the dish itself. What, what did you mean, Alan, about the dish? Oh, uh, chow fun. Yes, chow fun is totally different. They are based on each other, but they're different in flavor, and you're going to find out why right now. Um, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just pulling these noodles apart, and I like to do it right before I, I go. If you are savvy, when I ran restaurants in Vegas, we would do 100 orders a day, and they couldn't make enough fresh noodles to keep up with us. So I would take these packs and we'd actually freeze them uh, when we got them fresh. But you must, in order, to, uh, in order to bring them back frozen, you have to thaw them in room temps, what we call slacking, slack them. And then secondly, uh, you have to steam them in the package to, to we're going to re-soften, uh, re-gelatinize the rice flour. Okay? Um, Hall Fun was greasy and broken in Chinese market. That means it wasn't fresh. It is, it is greasy, by the way, because these are held together. Look at that. Look how greasy my hands are. These are held together by oil. Uh, so they are greasy, but that just meant they weren't fresh. Good questions. Okay. Uh, drunken noodles. Here we go. The soul of Chinese cooking. Oyster sauce. Boom. All right, uh, I'm gonna add more ingredients. So start thinking about flavors as I add ingredients, okay? Sweet soy sauce, which is basically molasses and Chinese soy, right there. All right, so that's sweet. Uh, this is savory and salty. Uh, and then uh, I use Thai oyster sauce. Absolutely, don't switch. It, Thai oyster sauce lacks saltiness. So if you're using Thai oyster sauce, Simran, add a little more fish sauce. Okay, there you go. Oh no, I just brought that out as an example. Uh, sriracha, and I'm using uh, fake sriracha. That's a whole nother conversation. No, this is just sriracha. Um, what else do I have? What am I missing here? That's what I'm missing. Fish sauce in there. Um, and if you find yourself making this a lot, I want you to um, uh, up this sauce by four or five and put it in a bottle, okay? I was about to say he's not using the right kind. Yeah, sriracha, I know, this is fake. A little bit of garlic in there, um, and a little bit of ginger in there. And I actually put the basil in the sauce, okay? I was about to be surprised at the sriracha. Yeah, I know, if you took my other Thai class, I basically trashed this sriracha, because it's not authentic, but it still is delicious for certain applications. All right, so that, this sriracha is not Thai sriracha. That's why I make fun of it. Uh, okay, uh, but I use it for spicy tuna, I use it for this dish, I use it for pho, but it's not a, 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 an authentic sriracha, okay? Lastly, I'm gonna put a little sugar in here, and then I'm done, I've just made drunken noodle sauce. Any questions on noodles or sauce? We're about to fire and we're just about done for the night. All right, the factory is only 20 minutes from me. Oh wow, you live uh, by Ir Irwindale, or where is it now? So yes, look, uh, I, I know the, 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 the trend uh, family from Hoi Fong Foods, like, I am nothing but jealous because they are literally multi-millionaires to put in the sauce. I'm just trying to keep it real as a chef to tell you about ingredients. That's all. Why don't I have my own, have I have your own in the fridge? I'd love to see how it's made. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't make my sriracha for this. Uh, that's a good catch by the way. So sauce, done. Noodles, pulled. Mise en place, finished. Uh, last thing I'm gonna need is um, shrimp. Thanks, Tad. There you go. Shrimps are done. Uh, any protein works, okay? My cousin just came home for the night with his buddies. He's almost finishing the curry. That's awesome. Uh, or is it? Because you're like, you didn't save any for you. Yo, it's such a good recipe, guys. My curry recipe is solid all the way around. 
Uh, and, and usually, like, I love Indian curry, but some people might have had bad experiences. Um, but Thai curry and Indian curry taste very, very different. Okay, full speed, heat. Tighten pans down. I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, um, the Indian curries are very, but so are Thai curries, right? All curries are very. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm stepping this out in my head. I'm going to go aromatics, protein, noodles, sauce, veg, and go and done. All right? Um, oil. I like grapeseed oil. I like sunflower. I like very neutral oils. Very light tasting, but very hot. So that's what I like to cook with. This is a brand new bottle. What am I doing wrong here? I'm having issues. I haven't even drank. I didn't drink tonight. Ah, this bottle. All right. There it is right there. So questions, you guys are good? Oh, only 41 minutes. We're just about done. The last 10 minutes, we're into the questions. Um, okay, here we go. Oil in the pan. All right, I'm waiting for the oil to get nice and wispy. All right, there you go. So aromatics are gonna go in. Chili, I'm switching chilies now. I'm going to Serrano because I think they're sweeter, they're less hot. If you're a chili head, you're gonna go straight to Thai chilies all day. In Thailand, a lot of chefs basically, uh, they, they, they pound together in a, in a mortar, uh, garlic and, and Thai chilies, and they just, they start every, they start every stir fry that way. So, so you can do that at home too, it's a nice tip. Okay, um, fresh noodles. Here we go, you guys ready? Uh, what do I want to cook with this time? I'm gonna go with, I was gonna use metal because the Thai pan can handle it, but your ears might not be able to, okay? Here we go. Garlic, chili. Ali, be careful. This, this chili, and when the chili hits the pan, uh, it can make uh, pepper spray. So do your recipes all call for Thai chilies or can you use dry? Uh, it depends on the dish. But if you don't have fresh, you can always use dry. Okay? You pound it up, you crush it into powder. You can always use dry. And you can always use fresh interchangeably if you understand the spice levels of those chilies. Okay? So, um, aromatics. Do you need to be closer, guys? Are you okay from where you are? Let's go a little closer. Yeah, would you mind? Yeah, come on in. Onion. Yeah, you can even probably lay it there and tripod it down. Do you want to, like, the same way before? Yeah, you should do the same way before, so you don't have to hold it. Let me do that, and then I'll do that. How's that, family? You guys good right there? With dry basil work? Um, I haven't experimented with that. I don't think so, though, because of the, the aromatics from the fresh is a lot different than the dry. So I don't think it will. All right? Uh, here we go. That's good. Okay, because they're happy. Shrimp. And I, I, like, I like shrimp dressing. That's my favorite dressing. I want to sear off the shrimp. They like the camera position. All right, good. Now, whenever I cook rice, this is rice, it's rice noodle. I like to use eggs, so fried rice, rice noodles. I think they're, they're a natural pair. So watch, I do hot side, cold side. I wanna put all my ingredients on one side, off heat. I'm centering my heat on this other side here. I'm gonna crack my eggs right into there. One, all right, two, and I think it's important to not over scramble these. I want the, the lacy effect. I want to see a, a, a variegated egg. You know what I mean? The yellow and the white. And I'm making a bed for it. Do you guys see that? And then I'm going to let it just start to crisp up on the edges over some heat. And to this, I'm adding my noodles right into the bed. And they work together. The egg is going to coat the noodles and uh, give it a nonstick surface to, to ride. Watch. I just smash the eggs, cook the noodles, and now they can sear with a, a small coating of noodles. Just like that. And they don't stick. I don't need to use a lot of oil. Okay? Um, carbonara, yes. Man, I love carbonara. All right. So now I'm using the surface area of the pan. I really want it to sear. Let's add some tomato in there. And I'm listening. I'm listening. I want I want the noodles to get a good tear. I don't have a jet walk at home, like a 
200,000 BTU walk like I do at my restaurants to be like, ooh. And next, so I really want to take the time to sear these noodles a bit before I add the sauce. Because I want the noodles to get a little crunchy on the edges. So that's why I'm not disturbing you. Any questions? How are we going to be okay? We're just about done with the class here tonight. So, Allie, how's that? That, that, uh, like, the curry. Oh, oh so good. I undercooked my rice, didn't I? Um, Honestly. I thought it was, no, I thought it was fine. Okay, I wanted to go under, but I might have wanted to under. Okay, here we oh, go. Good. Nothing is sticking. Everything is tight. I'm always scraping the bottom. I'm, all right? Now, all right, here. Don't want it to be over. Mmm. By the way, I just added Pad Thai Master Class, um, and I added Sushi Class, guys. So I added Pad Thai Master Class, and I added Sushi. So if you want to join us uh, after tonight, book it right away. We are filling up quick. So uh, basil, Thai basil again, or Italian basil. Um, fun fact: uh, in my Vegas restaurant, have you ever ate with me at Wynn? I used Italian basil because I couldn't find someone to keep up with all my Thai basil needs. So it's okay to use some Italian basil here. All right. Okay. Uh, here's the part where the noodles and sauce coat, uh, they all join up. If you start cooking too long, you start breaking noodles. So I'm going to be very aware not to cook this too much longer because the noodles are nice and slippery and delicious right now. Any longer, they'll break. Right. God, we're just about done with class. Isn't that amazing? Salmon in the freezer as we speak. Very cool. Excellent. Alan is going to make salmon sashimi. If you haven't seen that video, do check it out. Okay. Uh, I scraped the bottom of the pan constantly. The noodles are coated. They're not breaking yet. They're still nice and chewy and elastic. I need to taste this before I plate it. All right. Check out the noodle. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right, booking class. Yes, I'll see you guys at the sushi and Tapad Time Master Class. I'm, I'm trying a new format. I'm going to do short master classes on iconic dishes. I go very deep into ingredients that way and really talk it up. So I'm really taking my time. Um, yo. Jungle noodles, right there, so yeah. So um, let me put all the dishes down. Papaya salad. Uh, Allie killed the curry already. Yeah, sorry. No, no, that's good. I'm it glad was you so ate good. it. <laughs> uh, I'll put a little curry in a bowl here. Oh, thanks, Tab, for setting this up. The cleanup's easy, but it's the prep that's hard. A little curry action. I'm going to be very left. full. <laughs> and, and I will be so happy. We are all going to be full. This is, it's nice. And the West Coast is so early. It's like dinner time. For us. So there it is, family. Uh, Penang curry. Papaya salad. Drunken noodles. All done. We did it. We'll repo camera. Uh, I'll take over. We'll say thank you to Allie for running camera for us tonight. And then let's hang out for a minute. Let's, let's chat. Let me turn on your audio. Let's talk. Thank You're you, Allie. A lot of thank pleasure. you, Allie. Okay. I'm taking the laptop. Uh, I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. What up, family? I'm switching over. So this, at this point, uh, Sean Carter's cooking. All I ask, if we, we can have a dialogue now, if you want to uh, raise your hand, I'll call on you. I'll, we'll unmute and we'll have a conversation. So uh, firstly, thank you everybody. If at this point, you guys are like, Jet, that was an awesome class, or if not, if you guys wanna take off, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, really, really appreciate you. Um, your money tonight is going to TAD, your money is going to Canines for Warriors, and just our cost, but the rest of that, you guys did a nice thing by hanging out with us tonight. So um, sushi class, Pad Thai master class, are on. If there's something you think we're missing, I'm happy to add it. Uh, I will be uploading this by tomorrow so you can cook along. Private link just for you guys for a few weeks. And then I'll ask your permission if we repost it. So, okay. Um, what's up, y'all? Sean Carter, unmute, homie. 
Talk to us. All right, so I opened up all my cans of coconut milk. Yep. What can I do with the extra coconut milk that I didn't use? Can I John, it? I want I want you to pour it out of the tins into a uh, either zippy bag or a sealable container. If you're going to go long, freeze them in a zippy bag. If you're going to okay. go short, you're good for a few weeks just in the fridge. All right, and you're awesome as always. <clears throat> no, man, you are. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, he's been with us for a long, long time. So, uh, uh, yes, I'm going back to uh, view. Raise your hands. It doesn't have to be cooking related. If there's a comment, a concern, something you want to chat about. Hey, Typho, what's up? Carol, Kara Roberts, unmute. Talk to us. Okay. Hi there. So, is this the real Ooh, sriracha? You have real sriracha. Hold that up. Everyone's see, watching it now. Uh, that is sriracha, sriracha panit. That is the rumored to be the first sriracha. You okay, got it. I found that at Whole Foods. Whoa, get out of here. Whole Foods so <laughs> progressive. That's pretty amazing. That's New York. Oh, that's awesome. And, well, so what I'm part of New York? having a hard time finding the fresh uh, noodles. Ah, so Chinatown, so Matsu. I have this from Whole Foods. And it has a lot of bad ingredients. Oh, name one off. I'm curious. Uh, tapioca. Not bad. That no? one's okay. Yeah, that's good. I need, it. I need my glasses. Oh, me too. So don't worry about it. Corn starch. Um, not bad at all. That's you are still really? okay. It's, yeah, for sure. Be rice noodles. Well, you need the starches to make the gummy feeling. Okay. So, so this yeah, is if okay. you guys want, you're good. Okay, but then thanks so I, much. And then I, what else do you get? I, I drive everywhere. <laughs> what is that? I found this. Those look like, like fancy noodles. I know at a Thai store in Woodside. Wow, you really went everywhere. Now you I, better I be cooking. did it. I live on Long Island because I can't find anything around <laughs> me. But I could go to Chinatown, but I, you know, didn't want right. to travel. I gotcha. You well, you're think? good. I tried this. I'm okay with that too. Yeah, but it, yeah. the noodles broke on me. Yeah, those are not, those are kind of, they've been around. They're not the okay. freshest. So just am I FYI. better off with uh, the dry stuff that I have to soak? That's a, your choice, but if you soak it, you will, it will get less breakage and you don't have to worry about holding fresh. Because I can't find the fresh. That I think have. play with the dried noodles and you can hold them in your pantry. Okay. How's that sound? Hey, it's good okay. to see you. I love you. Oh, you're very kind. See you later. Okay. Uh, Bye. Who's next, guys? Anyone want to chat? Okay, Brandon. What up, Brandon? What's up? Um, new to Thai food. What's some good couple recipes to start out with? Uh, I would do like probably easy ones. Like Saute is delicious. Thai barbecue chicken. Um, are you noodles, meat, veg? What are you, man? Uh, noodles, meat, yeah. chicken. You're like everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, do saute. Um, do uh, this curry is very easy. And uh, the and any, 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 you have three to start with right here. You have okay, three to thanks. Start with. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out. So, someone's asking recipe for what? Okay, um, cool. Anyone else? Okay, Lisa, what up? How are you? Take your, oh. There you go. Just checking. Are you going back to filming anything soon? Good question. Um, I just shot the most recent season of uh, uh, Ready Jet Cook. It was a small crew, so it was easy to execute. Uh, Guy and I are talking about they're refiring up guys' grocery games because California is still kind of hot right now. Um, there, we might be pushing a little further. My other job, in case you all didn't know, is you know I run. Uh, I help run the food service at NBC Studios. We have, we're going to be in full production with five, seven or eight different shows first, and then we're going to ramp up. So production is starting up again. Uh, but Food Network, so you're going to, we're going to probably do a few episodes of like Triple G at Home, et cetera, some fun stuff like that. So, yeah. Love seeing you on TV. You're very kind. Thanks, Lisa. Thank Good you. to see you. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Oh, you're very kind. Um, anyone else? Before, there we go. C Hill. Unmute. What's happening? Um, I did the teriyaki. I bought the black soy sauce. Ah, yeah. And now what do I do with all this? 
uh, I want you to use that for the pa for uh, this dish, for the drunken noodle dish, in lieu okay. of uh, the sweet soy. I want you to use that anywhere a Chinese or a Thai recipe calls for soy. Everywhere. That it's just really molasses -y sweet. It's sweet, but, I know. Yeah. I want you to fold yeah. it into barbecue sauces. I oh, want yeah, you to good. put it into places that ask for molasses. Okay. Yeah, how you been, you good? Thank you. You got it, all right. Anyone else? Question. Last few calls, who's talking? Where are you hey, at? Hey, Sherry, in the corner somewhere. Uh, hey, I know, we're uh, all... talk I to me. Try to mellow out the curry because I made it too um, <clears throat> spicy for half the family. And, no big deal. Uh, now it's too liquidy, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you know what, Take uh, strain out the solids Take the liquid and reduce those li that liquid. Okay. Perfect. Um, but don't cook the solids in it. Yeah, it's not doing much good here. It's, <laughs> it's all right. You're doing good. Is it your birthday or someone's birthday? Yeah, it's my birthday. Happy this everyone. Birthday wish, wish Sherry happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sherry. Happy birthday yeah, to you. Yeah, thank you. This was what I wanted. So thank you very Aww. much for planning around my birthday. Happy birthday. Sherry. Aw, Sherry is a Team Tila, a longtime Team Tila member, so. Happy birthday, Sherry. We really well, now I'm waiting for your next cookbook because I'm almost done with this Asian one. Oh, so my like, Lord. Right. I know. She's cooked almost 100 recipes. Um, right. Well, that's going to be almost 200 by the time I finish this book then. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Thai book is probably not till next fall. So we'll have to find you some gifts to hold you until then. Yeah, you'll find me something to do because, you know, I got to keep myself occupied here. <laughs> I hear you. Let's find let's find you another uh, fun book of someone cool that, that has a good recipe. Thanks Happy a lot. Happy birthday. So much. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Um, uh, all right, family. Um, let's see. Yes, Leonor. Did I say your name right? It's Hi. Leonor. Leonor. Leo. Everyone calls me Leo. Hi, hey, Leo. you're from Miami, Florida, which we're kind of a hot spot right now, too. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, fabulous class. You're a wonderful teacher. Thank you um, so much. If I'm going to invest in one of your cookbooks to start, which mm. one would you recommend? That do you find yourself eating are you eating more asian or eating more there's um, Melinda's <laughs> holding up the book okay. do you are you are you a fan more of asian or more american food my family loves asian food uh, yeah i probably would go there leonor i think that's the okay. one to start with so okay yeah absolutely um we've got a few so signed books at teamtila.com guys we have a few ones so i'll look for it there thank Thanks, you very leonor. very much be safe all right this thank was a so super much. treat Good oh, night. Very kind. It's Good late night. here. It's 10 o'clock. Oh, no. Get some rest. <laughs> we'll see you All later. Right. Bye. Um, bye. Last call, family. Terry sweating it up in the kitchen. Melinda, uh, unmute. Unmute. What's Thank happening? you. Hey, I just signed up for both of your other classes. I can't wait because I was already starting to have withdrawals. Oh, I know. This is a little community we built up. I mean, this is our this fourth or fifth class. This has been you know? my summer. I had your free class too to get the kinks out. So I know you, you've been from the beginning. I mean, you I really have. have. I know. We've, and we've, I've we've really created something fun it. here. You know what I mean? And, and I think too, if you're new to this, like Simran's here, she's OG, Sherry's OG. Uh, there's a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, we, we, this is what we do guys. Allie and I started this up to do some good for charity, but also create community. You know what I mean? It's yeah. fun for us to do this with you guys. It really is. It's Thanks. awesome. And, and I'm uh, starting a kitchen remodel, so I'm going to oh, be. Oh, perfect. Cool. I know. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Very cool. Thank I you really so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, And thank you, Allie. Thank you, Allie. Awesome. It's my pleasure. She says you're welcome. Excellent. Thanks, Melinda. Bye, guys. Keep us posted in your kitchen. Simran. Oh, I will. Simran's eaten. Yes, you raised your hand, girl. You asked to talk. I did, I did, but you know, if you give us such good recipes, it's partly oh. your fault. Um, for the drunken noodle, it's supposed to be my husband is the one who came home. And yes. You know, his, his, he's left he some curry it. for me, but he literally like comes in the kitchen and goes, this is better than any restaurant curry. Oh, so that's that. amazing. Um, that's really cool. The drunken noodles, I definitely should have used Chinese oyster sauce. I can taste that. Like, you can taste the difference, right? It's just like, it's more subtle in its flavor. And I feel like, you know, yeah, drunk, yeah, it, it is different. So noodles, I can, you, can you definitely need that. like crazy flavor. So the drunken noodles that I created because I am Chinese um, are, are stronger flavored. So yes, you, by using yeah. the Thai oyster sauce, friends, you can taste the difference. It's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, all right, let's see. Simran, it's good to see you. And, all right, guys, last call. We're coming on 7 o'clock. Uh, yes, uh, Christine, unmute. Hi, how are you? We're well. How are you? I'm good. This is my first time with you, and I, too, as Leo is I'm from Miami. Oh, you're in Miami as well. <laughs> yes, I thought you were in San two... Francisco. You, you, you fooled no. me. No, that was just a background. But <laughs> two little things. Like, if you wanted to substitute duck in for that curry, how oh, would yes. that work? And I missed, and I think I didn't sauce the drunken noodles well. Is there a way to, like, just add more to it without putting it on the heat, or do I need to put it on the heat? You bring up two good questions, right? Um, number one, duck. Uh, I would cook the duck first. So uh, is it duck breast or if, if it's I, duck I don't. I haven't gotten it yet, so I, because oh, okay, I don't good. really know which one to do. If you live by a Chinatown that has roast duck, I would buy the roast duck and then put chop that in and put it in because that would be delicious. Okay, because I duck is one of my favorite proteins. Um, the second question is, um, the drunken noodles, whenever you're making any stir fry family, any stir fry at all, not just my recipes, double your sauce. We have a tendency as cooks to, when we eyeball things, we overdo veg protein, starch, and noodles. So if you double your sauce and you cook and you find yourself going, ooh, I don't have enough, you, made insu you have insurance. It's creating okay. insurance for yourself. So. Okay. I hope you had Thank fun, you Christine. so much. Thank you so much. I did. I had a blast. And that curry is fantastic. Oh, it's fire, wow. man. It really yeah. is good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. You got it. Um, last call. Yes, Ali, come on in. Oh, yeah. Uh, Il Il Ilona or Ilona? How do, I, how do I say it correctly? Unmute yourself. And then Ali, come in here. Unmute. Unmute. Hi. You say Ilona. <laughs> Ilona, I, sorry about that. Don't worry. Uh, first of all, please don't forget to send me the link so I can get the ingredients here in Mexico. Okay. And then I did mess up with the soy sauce. I used dark soy sauce instead of sweet soy sauce. So I figured yeah. that throwing in some light brown sugar would like balance it. That's perfect. That's exactly what you should be doing. I think that was the right balance. The world of soy sauce is vast. They're, am everybody. they're yeah. amazing. I have never tried them before. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you found them. Where in Mexico are you? Mexico City. Oh, yeah. Huge. A lot of, lot of stores, a lot of stuff. So. Yeah, but yeah. we're still in confinement. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. I see. So Got it's it. really hard to get a lot of ingredients right now because everything's closed. Understood. Well, mm -hmm. please be safe. Um, we'll all stay in touch on ingredients. And, uh, you know, you guys all have my email. I'm the one who sends them out myself. So, so if you have any questions, let us know, okay? Thank you so much. It was a great experience. It was my pleasure. Caroline Lau. Hey, Jen. What's happening? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you, chef. <laughs> oh, just Jet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jet, could you flash me your uh, sweet shoyu bottle? Yeah, for sure. What, what um, brand do you get? I use, I use Dragonfly. It is a, it's an Asian brand. I like this one a lot. It's not really available everywhere. But um, Simran has a brand called ABC. That one is pretty readily available too. But uh, it's just Dragonfly brand. So you can just look, look for that if you want. ABC is also a brand that's out there quite a bit, family. So, yep. I'll just add it to Tad's list. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I hope you had fun. We did. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Thanks. What's your name? Steven. Hey, Steven. What's up, man? I hope you had fun tonight. Yeah, of course. It was, oh. it was great, to hear, great to hear this stuff. Thanks. Very cool. All right, families. We're coming on 7. It's time to get the kids ready for bed. Alex, G, Laura, I'm happy to take a question if you guys have one, but... Um, T is good to see you. Cecilia, thank you. C Hill, Bridget, it's good to see you. Kathy Chu. Allie has a, come on in, Allie, talk to us. I'm just shocked. I'm happy she's coming in because she said she wouldn't come in. So somebody was asking about the coconut bar recipe. Um, I use the base of the Tres Leches coconut bars from this book. It's The Fearless Baker by Erin G. McDowell. She's fabulous. Um, this is actually a really good book. She explains a lot of things and tells you why things work. So if you like to bake, this is a, a good one. Um, but what I did is use coconut whip on the top. Jed hates whipped cream. 
So I used half coconut cream, half whipping cream, and whipped it with some powdered sugar. Very cool. And just powdered sugar to taste, however sweet you like it. Don't you think we need an Instagram video on how to? Wouldn't that explain things better, guys? Right? And yeah, I think Brian says so. Simran, everyone says we need an Instagram video. Anyway. <laughs> well, Sean says for show. All right, guys. Um, as always, um, be well. Maddie's killing it. Look at those noodles. Alan, thanks for everything. Uh, Kathy, Bridget, thank you very much. Um, you guys, ever, you guys need anything? Fire back an email to that um, email address that went out. I'll see you guys. Uh, sushi pad thai masterclass for some of you. The others have already taken thai, uh, pad thai. So um, if you need anything at all, let me know. If you took, if you if you cooked, post your recipes. Tag us on Instagram. I'll always repost them on my stories. And um, please have a good night. Be safe out there. And remember one random act of kindness every single day. See you later, family. Come on, say happy, say goodbye. This is like it's good seeing you all. Remember back in the days. It's nice to see everybody. It's, you know, it's, I feel like it's always such a good group of people that we have in this class. This one was super warm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, everyone, thanks, Alex. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Sherry, as always. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Typha. Have a good one. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Cecilia. You guys have a great night. We'll see you later, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye bye.